We all witnessed Flight 6 and how it ended with Starship exploding shortly after splashing down into the ocean. After that dramatic explosion, many of us assumed it would be nearly impossible to recover any part of the Starship, and we thought SpaceX might just leave it at the bottom of the ocean. But we were wrong. SpaceX has not only recovered the upper stage, but also uncovered some incredible findings. We'll dive into all of it in today's video. Before we delve any deeper, please make sure to subscribe to our channel for future updates about Starship and SpaceX's other groundbreaking achievements. The mission began with Super Heavy Booster 13 propelling Ship 31 into the sky. All engines ignited successfully at liftoff, and the rocket ascended smoothly, delivering immense thrust to carry Ship 31 toward its target altitude. The first stage of the flight proceeded as planned. Around 2 minutes and 50 seconds into the flight, Super Heavy Booster 13 completed its role and separated from Ship 31. This marked the start of the mission's second stage. After the separation, Booster 13 initiated its controlled descent back to Earth, eventually performing a soft splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico. Unlike earlier test flights, this booster was not designed for recovery via grid fins or a catch attempt. Meanwhile, Ship 31 continued its flight into the upper atmosphere. As Ship 31 climbed higher, it followed its planned trajectory and achieved significant milestones, including reaching the Karman line, the boundary of space. Its second-stage engines fired efficiently, allowing the spacecraft to reach the intended altitude before shutting down. After the engine cutoff, Ship 31 transitioned to a coasting phase relying on momentum to continue its path. This phase lasted for several minutes as the spacecraft prepared for its controlled descent and re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. During its descent, Ship 31 reoriented itself to align with the planned landing site in the Indian Ocean. The heat shield tiles, which had undergone recent design improvements, played a critical role in protecting the spacecraft from the intense heat generated by re-entry. These tiles were specifically engineered to withstand such extreme conditions. After navigating through re-entry, Ship 31 approached the ocean and executed a controlled splashdown. Initially, the landing appeared successful, with the vehicle remaining intact upon contact with the water. However, shortly after splashdown, things began to go wrong. Ship 31 started tipping over, likely due to instability or water entering the vehicle, which shifted its center of gravity. Within seconds, an explosion occurred, which was visible from monitoring equipment. This sudden failure shocked many observers and led to concerns that SpaceX would not be able to recover any part of the spacecraft. Several potential factors could have caused the explosion. Residual propellant left in the tanks might have ignited, possibly triggered by structural damage sustained during the splashdown. Pressurized gases or internal heat retained from re-entry could also have played a role. Additionally, water ingress into critical systems could have led to a catastrophic failure. Despite the explosion, SpaceX committed to recovering parts of Ship 31 to analyze what went wrong and use the findings to improve future missions. The company deployed two recovery vessels to the Indian Ocean to locate and retrieve debris. These ships were equipped with specialized tools for handling heavy components submerged underwater. The recovery team monitored the splashdown site for approximately 27 hours before beginning the retrieval process. Surprisingly, several key components were found in good condition. Composite overwrapped pressure vessels were recovered and appeared largely undamaged, indicating their potential for reuse in future tests. Heat shield tiles, particularly those from the nose cone, were also recovered and found to be intact. Initially, most people thought that B-13 would be recovered first because it's closer to SpaceX's operations. However, that didn't happen. While there's been little information about B-13's recovery, there has been significant progress with S-31. The two ships were sent from Australia to observe the landing and stayed near S-31 for about 27 hours before starting the recovery process. Although S-31 wasn't recovered as a whole, large sections of it seem to be in good condition. Eventually, they are expected to be sent to Starbase for further study. This data will help SpaceX improve Starship designs and recovery methods in the future. Musk has provided insights into what's coming next. 
he confirmed that the seventh Starship flight will follow a similar flight path to the sixth. Both the Starship upper stage and the Super Heavy booster are planned to splash down in the ocean after their missions. However, the real excitement lies in the plans for the eighth flight. Musk revealed that SpaceX aims to make Flight 8 the first fully reusable Starship mission. This would involve catching both the booster and the Starship upper stage with the Mechazilla Tower Arms, a monumental milestone in spaceflight engineering. While SpaceX has already demonstrated the ability to catch the Super Heavy booster using Mechazilla during Flight 5, catching the upper stage presents an entirely new set of challenges. The Super Heavy booster is comparatively easier to recover because of its predictable descent path and its ability to perform a controlled return. The booster's descent is primarily vertical, and it uses its grid fins to guide itself back to the launch tower with precision. This process, while still incredibly complex, is something SpaceX has been perfecting with its Falcon 9 rockets for years. The upper stage, however, is a different story. After separating from the booster, the Starship upper stage travels at much higher speeds and covers much greater distances. It must complete its mission in orbit before re-entering the atmosphere, making its descent trajectory far more dynamic and less predictable. Atmospheric drag, varying re-entry angles, and the extreme heat generated during re-entry all add layers of complexity to the recovery process. Furthermore, the upper stage is designed to carry payloads into space, which means it needs to retain its structural integrity while also being lightweight enough to optimize its performance. This makes designing a heat shield that can withstand re-entry forces while remaining light and durable a significant engineering challenge. SpaceX has already made progress in this area with its advanced heat shield tiles, but ensuring they perform reliably for recovery is a major hurdle. Flight 8 is expected to test these capabilities, and success would mark a turning point for SpaceX. However, Musk has acknowledged that this step will be incredibly challenging and will likely require multiple iterations and test flights before it becomes routine. SpaceX has recently achieved another major milestone with its Falcon 9 rocket, marking the 400th successful launch. This mission took place on November 23, 2024, when a Falcon 9 rocket lifted off from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California, carrying 20 Starlink satellites into low Earth orbit. This achievement underscores the Falcon 9's reliability and SpaceX's leadership in modern space transportation. The Falcon 9, which first launched in 2010, has become the backbone of SpaceX's operations. Its reusability has played a critical role in increasing the frequency of launches and significantly reducing costs. Over the years, SpaceX has fine-tuned its recovery systems, allowing the same rockets to be reused multiple times. This efficiency has enabled the company to meet the rising demand for satellite deployments, cargo resupply missions, and various commercial and governmental projects. The frequency of Falcon 9 launches has seen an impressive rise over the years. For example, in 2021, SpaceX completed 31 launches, already a remarkable number compared to other space companies. By 2022, the company more than doubled this figure with 61 successful missions. The momentum continued in 2023 with SpaceX carrying out 96 launches, an unprecedented accomplishment in the industry. In 2024, SpaceX is on track to surpass these records, further demonstrating its ability to scale its operations year after year. This increase in launch cadence reflects SpaceX's aggressive approach to meeting global demand for reliable and affordable space transportation. The company's primary focus has been on launching satellites for its Starlink Internet constellation, which aims to provide global high-speed Internet coverage. Other missions include transporting payloads for private companies, governmental agencies, and international organizations. Looking ahead, SpaceX has ambitious plans for 2025 and beyond. The company aims to reach up to 100 launches per year, which would translate to roughly 12 launches every month. This goal is part of SpaceX's long-term vision of achieving 1,000 launches annually in the future. While this might seem extremely ambitious, Musk has outlined how advancements in rocket reusability, operational efficiency, and launch infrastructure could make it feasible. 
For example, the rapid turnaround of reusable rockets, combined with streamlined ground operations, will be critical to reaching such high launch rates. That's all for today's video. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for future updates about Starship and more exciting space news. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you in the next video.